I, you know the storyteller, right? So I'm going to show you a picture of a guy. I'm not going to show you. Bear's going to show you. I'm sorry. Clayton is going to show you a picture of a guy. <laughs> That's Ben Hanna. Ben Hanna's my buddy. Matter of fact, if you called Ben today or if you talked to Ben and you said, hey, Terry Madden's here preaching today. What do you think of this guy? I was, he's my Timothy. My Timothy. Um, ben Han is very, very special to me. He's somebody that God placed in my life to allow me to mentor. I wanted to show you his picture. You can see, your Timothy doesn't necessarily have to be younger than you, does he? You think Ben's younger than I am? No, he's not. Ben came to me one Sunday. He'd been coming to our church. He and his wife were living together. They weren't married. Um, and actually, the two of them came, and they sat down with me, and our experience began together by me having to give them some really difficult news. They said, look, we love living together. We love this. I mean, we're, we know we're supposed to be together. We understand they've both been married before. They said, what should we do? I said, well, you're living together now, right? They said, yep. I said, okay, here's what you need to do. You've got to move away from each other. You can't be living like that. Living like that is a sin. Oh, I told you I was going to maybe step on toes today. It's sin. It's not right. And they said, well, what do we need to do to get it straightened out? I said, well, if you want to, go down to Kern County, get a marriage license, come back up here, tomorrow I'll marry you. They said, what? I said, yeah, we're going to do a whole bunch of counseling between now and then, but I know both of you pretty well. We'll go through the counseling course. I'll commit to you the next 12 hours. We will sit together for the next 12 hours. I'll do the whole thing with you. Ben said, man, I, I don't think I can do that. I said, all right, so we set a time. He said, I don't think I can stay away from her that long. I said, all right, so here's what we're going to do. Can you, can you do it for three weeks? Can you move out and stay in your own place, away from her, in any kind of a physical way for the next three weeks? And I'll commit to you that we'll do all the counseling, we'll do everything we need to do, and then at the end of that three weeks, I'll do your ceremony. Ben said, yeah, Pastor, I can do that. I held both of their hands. We prayed. So that's just where we kind of started. Ben came to me one Sunday, so they got married. God was good. Man, things started to happen. Ben came to me one Sunday, sat down. He said, Pastor, I need to talk to you. I said, about oh, what? He said, man, I haven't wanted to talk to anybody about this, but I just can't keep it inside of me anymore. I said, well, give me the word, man. Tell me what's going on. He said, I've had a call to preach on my life since I was a little boy. I guess Ben was probably 60 at that point. And he said, I've dodged and I've averted that call. I've done everything that I can do to not follow that because I was afraid. I was intimidated. I had all the reasons in the world. And he said, I just, I've run out of reasons. What do I do? I said, well, here. I wrote down the address, the website address, the Global University. Anybody ever heard of Global? It was Berean University then. Berean University, Global University. It's our assembly of God Theological Seminary. It's how I went to Bible school. I worked full time, I had a full family, and my wife and I did marine courses together. It's great. It's an awesome way to learn about God. Ben enrolled in, in, in Berean University, he began to take his Bible courses. It didn't work for him. You know, sometimes online teaching is not always the best thing for everybody. So Ben went down to an Assembly of God church in town called Canyon Hills. They were teaching a curriculum out of Oral Roberts University, which is very sound, very, very sound theologically. And they were teaching some courses of that, some courses of Berean. Ben went through, and uh, I don't know, it took him like four years, or maybe five years. Ben got his, he was ordained as a minister of God. Praise God. You talk about the path that God brings us down, right? From being someplace lost in sin and where he was, to going to a place where it is that God could begin to use him. So Ben, um, he said, man, I've got a ministry, and I've had a vision. God gave me a vision. So what was your vision? He said, the vision is church without walls. I got a, I got a picture of that too. And I said, well, Ben, what is church without walls? Does that mean you're going to go out and preach on the street corner? He goes, no, I've got something more specific in mind. He said, God's told me to go down to the toughest neighborhood in Bakersfield. This is Oildale, California. It's where we're from. In Oildale, California, there's a street that's called Roberts Lane. If you drove down, I took, I've taken people for tours down Roberts Lane, and they always go, um, could we turn and get out of here, please? I don't know where you brought me, but this is crazy. It's crazy down there on that street. Ben went, 
started loving on the people down there. Bought a tent. Parked it right next to a liquor store, the busiest liquor store in London. And that's where they have church. Thousands of people have been saved. Thousands of people have been saved. Ben kept going to Bible school. Now, when I call him, I say, uh, Dr. Hammond. Can I speak to Dr. Hammond? That's his name. Now it's Dr. Ben Hannon. He has a doctorate in theology. Amazing. Amazing how God does miracles, does he does. But you know what it takes? It takes the knowledge of the word. That's what Ben did. His heart was hungry for the word. He didn't really know what to do. He didn't know how to do it. But he went and he sought some advice. He asked, how do I do this? How do I get here? I gave him some simple advice. He said, just go do it. Go do it, but do a, this, a, a systematic theological study of the Word. It's great to read the Bible in your house just as literary works. It's beautiful. You can do that. Go read the Proverbs. Let me give you a challenge. Just go start with Proverbs. Go to Proverbs 1 on the first. So next month, we're coming up with, when's the first? Two days, right? Friday. It's Friday. It's more than, okay, yeah. fine. It's more than two days. But anyways, it's Friday. So on the first, go read Proverbs 1. And go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 every day. Just read that proverb. And you know what? You're going to not get all of the proverbs. There's 31 proverbs. You're not going to get them all every month. But every month, read them all, and then go back. So if there's only 28 days, only go to the 28th proverb. On the first, go back to the first. Go back to one. And do that every single day for the rest of your life. You'll never run out of beauty. Because God will flower, he will blossom the word in your heart as you do a systematic study. But I'm going to challenge you to even do more than that. There's not a person in here that shouldn't be enrolled in a Bible college someplace. We make Global University, the Assemblies of God makes Global University available to everybody, and it's not very expensive. You can go and enroll in one course at a time. I would highly recommend What's that? And you work at your own pace. If it takes you a year to get through one course, it's okay. Whatever it takes you, just go and do it. There's a number of wonderful courses in the life and times of Christ. You can just go on there and look at them. The Holy Spirit, how he moved home. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. You only have six months to finish the year. Listen, go... Go and start to study. He's, I, so let me just say, I, that doesn't bother me. It's fine. I love kids. They're good. All right, that's the end of point number one. So what do you have to do to be ready? Well, you've got to know the word. You've got to study. The Bible says for you to study to show yourself approved as a workman that not, need not be ashamed of the gospel. You've got to study so, point number two, we've got to get past feeling to determine our spiritual well-being. Uh, friends, we have got to get past feelings to determine our spiritual well-being. Sometimes you're going to feel like it, and sometimes you're just not going to feel like it, and that doesn't matter to God. God's responsibility for us in the church is not just that we're going to come here and have our ears tickled. That's what Paul warned against. Jesus was telling us, Paul is telling us through Jesus that our job is to make ourselves ready all the time, whether we feel like it or not. I tell you, you're going to hear me say this a lot. I'll say it again. My availability gives God the opportunity to do miracles through me. I said that almost every Sunday from the pulpit. And all the people in the church, they would all smile and say it at the same time. My availability gives God the opportunity to do miracles through me. It's not him first, then me. He already did his work. Listen, friends, in case you don't know, right, Jesus already did his work. We're just waiting. That was a great song, man. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Hmm. Whenever I sing that song, it puts tears in my eyes because that is my prayer. Jesus, come quickly. I know there are thousands and thousands here in Tioga that God wants to save, but it would be okay. If the sky just opened up and we all went together, it wouldn't be our decision. It's his decision. But how awesome would it be for all of us just to hold hands together and have the ceiling break open? 
Well, I think it'd be kind of awesome because it says first that the dead in Christ shall rise first, right? So the first thing that happens is the graveyard's going to explode and boom, people are going to fly and we're going to go, whoa, because they get to go first. I don't think it's going to be a long time, but I think it'll be long enough for us to go, whoa, something's going on. There's people missiles coming out of the ground. And then we go to join them to be in the clouds with our Lord and Savior. I look forward to that day. Because you know what? Sometimes I get tired and sometimes I get weary, but you've got to know that Jesus has already done his part. Now it's our turn. Can I say that again? Guys, Jesus has already done his part. It's our turn. It's our time. It's our time to shine. As the church of Jesus Christ, it's our turn to do and sacrifice ourselves for him. Because I'm telling you, as sure as you and I are sitting here listening and looking at each other, one day that sky is going to open. And I will guarantee you for a fact, we will go to meet him in the clouds if you're ready. If you're ready. We're going to meet him in the clouds. So I'm going to close that point by just saying this. If you wait until you feel like it, until you feel like it, you will never become effective in the kingdom of God. Point number three. You okay? Are you still with me? Do I need to speak up a little louder? Can you hear me preaching okay? I can start jumping up and down with stuff. Man. That would, that'd be okay. Just playing says no. Don't do that. Listen, I'm telling you, if you were prepared, okay, so this is be ready for the surprise. And I talked about a surprise, right? I mean, when that ground opens up and those people, brother, man, when they, I'm telling you, man, when they start coming out of the ground and going up there to be with the Lord, we're going to hear the trumpet, they're going to go, boom, out of the ground. That's going to be a surprise. But that's not the surprise I'm talking about. I'm talking about you ready for the surprise. Listen, if you are faithful and you do what it is that God has called you to do, if you will study the word and you will know the word, and like David said, thy word have I hid where? In my heart, that I might not sin against you. He was speaking to God. God said that David was a man after his own heart. And David said, thy word have I hid in my heart. Thy word have I treasured in my heart. Depends on which version you read. So that I won't sin against you. Listen. We need to know the word. And then we've got to be ready whenever it is that he calls us to be ready. No matter how you feel. I don't care if you're sick. I don't care if you're tired. I don't care if you're uncomfortable. I don't care if you're in pain. I don't care if your hip hurts. And every time I see my butt, the hip hurts thing, I, it reminds me of my father-in-law. My father-in-law had served in World War II. He was a, a hero. I mean, to me, he was a hero. I loved Jay Bowling. He was amazing. I still love him. With all my heart. The only dad I really ever had. And uh, JB, um, he joined the Navy in World War II. He served in World War II. He was actually on an island called Bella Bella. You ever heard of that? You ever seen the show Black Sheep Squad on TV? It was an old TV show that used to be on. Yeah. So my father in law was one of the mechanics on the island. 17 year old kid. He was wrenching on those things. Told some great stories. Airplanes, the guys, the pilots had come over and they fought. Bella Bella was an island. It was flat on this end, flat on this end, and it was a big, giant peak right in the middle. And what they fought over for the whole war was that peak. They went this way, they went that way. They went this way, they went that way. The whole time, that's what they did. And Dad said, you know, a lot of times they would come over and, and you know, they'd get shot up and after a flying mission and they would come back around and they would fly and they knew they couldn't land on the landing strip, so they would go over and crash into the sea. And he said part of his job was to go and recover those airplanes and they would bring them back and take whatever parts off them they could and put them on another airplane. They would take two wrecked up airplanes, make one good airplane, put a pilot in it, and away they'd go. 